Welcome back to the Complete Idiot's Guide to Stationers with 54 Bear, the Complete Idiot. Uh, just going to go over some basic uh, chip only method of doing two axis solar tracking. This will work on Mars or any other planet for that matter. Uh, it uses uh, one math processor, four IOs, and one memory chip. Uh, combined, that's uh, yeah, probably 10 iron, 10 copper, and 4 or 5 gold, something like that. Maybe even a little less. And it only uses a single sensor. So the way I tend to do things is have the solar panels aligned north to south. That way, when the morning sun comes up, they get full blast all the way across. And usually there's very little occlusion. You could have it worked east, you know, have the, the panels lined up east to west, but then in the morning and in the evening, um, you, you can have only one panel actually collecting stuff. For me, this, this works better. So I've got the data panels facing west. You see on the mouse pointer, I, I'm pointing east right now, and that's the direction that the power points or power port is, is, is going. I have the solar panel, sorry, the solar sensor, Point oriented to point towards the north and got it mounted flat here and what we're doing is we're basically splitting it into two sections so you have a logic reader logic readers job is to read the input of a particular thing and ex uh, export one of the values of it in this case it's looking at the daylight sensor and the option I've given it is to look at the horizontal value and when you point at it, it'll tell you what that horizontal value is. The output from that goes directly into the batch writer. That means this batch writer, the only thing it can see is this particular logic reader. And the output type is going to the solar panels. And the variable it's going to output to is the horizontal, because we're reading the horizontal. And you'll notice I've actually labeled these, because the way I've got it wired right now, everything can see everything else pretty much this is the other way of doing it if you didn't want to do that and it ends up being a little bit stupid with the way you have to route the wire around but anyway so that outputs the horizontal one the second one the logic reader it's again reading the daylight sensor the same one and this one's grabbing the vertical now over here, this is where it gets the uh, little bit funky. We have a, a memory unit, which has got the value of 90 stored into it. You can store any value, any numeric value in, in this that you wish. Um, what this does is it takes the logic memory, the value of 90, it subtracts the reading from the vertical reader, which is this one. And that gives you a reading of, at the moment, minus 8. Because the sun is just below the horizon there. It's just coming up. The output from this comes out the bottom, goes into the batch reader. This is reading the logic math. Again, this is the only thing that I can see. It's outputting to the solar panels, and it's outputting the vertical. And as you see, our solar panels are pointing nicely at it. Now, right now, we won't get 100% or close to 100% efficiency because the sun is actually a little bit too low. The lowest that these um, panels can go is 15 degrees. Uh, it can't go any lower than that. So when the sun is below 15 degrees elevation, then this is not getting the full effect. But as the sun comes up, You'll see the, the panel is staying almost still. It's beginning to rotate a little, um, but it's not elevating just yet. And the efficiency will get up. It should get up to 99 and stay there pretty much for the whole day. And in this environment, uh, the way things currently are in the game, the sun does not set in the west. Oh, there's the weird flying lump of orbiting something or other. It actually sets somewhere over there. So it does like a, a quarter arc, which is kind of makes sense if you, if you were to assume that you were in the northern hemisphere, 
but it shouldn't be coming up dead at 90. It should be coming up there and going over there somewhere, but yeah, this is a relatively recent change. I dare, I dare say that it's a work in progress. So now we're at 99% uh, efficiency. It stays there pretty much the whole way round. Yeah, I, I tried another way of showing the uh, the wiring in a simple way, and it didn't really work. This was with the um, solar sensor mounted in this orientation, because sometimes that saves a bit of space. It does work. I mean, this is the output. It's going to the solar panel, and it's it's reading it exactly the same. So you're still working with the memory unit but now there are two math units that are accessing it. Again, you, you can simplify this by having, or simplify the placement by having this style of wiring where everything can see everything. But when you do that, you really do need to label the stuff or alternatively put the chips down where you want them to be, then temporarily route things so the output of, say, this logic reader is reading the solar sensor you would break the cable. Let's uh, move this out of the way and show, I'll show you what I mean. Uh. Oh dear, I keep going past it. There we go. So you'd have the cable coming out like that. Oops. Yeah. Until I didn't rehearse this. And you'd basically run the cable around directly to the sensor. So it was the only thing it could see. Then once that's all done, then you just connect it back. Oh, right now I can't see it because it needs to be connected to the top bit. There we go. Oh, because I changed it, I have to change this to... Right, so this one's doing uh, horizontal, this one's doing vertical. There we go. Yep. Gets his marbles back, and we're back at 99%. Anyway, I uh, hope you found that interesting. Going to do some more uh, chip type stuff with uh, integrated, not sorry, not integrated circuits. Going to do more uh, chip stuff with power management. You can see I've been trying a few different variants to see if there are other simpler ways of doing it and things that you initially think, oh yeah, that should work, end up not working. And in this case, I ran out of battery. Just going to see what that one's actually doing right now. Now, this was a, a simpler chip way of doing it. Um, well, it's damaged. That's why it's not working. Okay, let's get some duct tape. And fix it up. See if that goes back to 100. Yeah. So there are... Uh, other ways of doing it as well, depending on how you, this particular one uses two sensors, but it doesn't require any math. Sometimes this is uh, a better way of doing it because this one does not require as much uh, power. Let's see, put that there. Oh, it's because I've got an output. Reading that, let's turn those off. So just for the tracking, that uses 30 watts. So 
in this particular environment I've got two uh, sensors in different orientations and that works uh, surprisingly well. So you can do it that way as well. So you've got one that's reading uh, one sensor. See this is daylight sensor, that's sensor 2. So I th let's see if I can maybe illustrate this. Set that to sensor 2 and this is outputting the horizontal so oops the horizontal yeah no actually I think it's because of this one's the wrong way around oh, it's lost its mind Yeah, it's 90 degrees offset. That's why. Yeah, d again, it all comes down to wh which orientation you're using in this particular one. Yeah. Don't want those. Uh, in this particular one, I've got them set the other way around than I did have on the uh, example platform over here. But anyway, hope that's useful. If not, leave a question. I will do my best to answer. 54 bear out.